screen. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You see, put your strengths to work. Yeah. We can see it. Good. That's first part of technology works. That's, that's a relief for me straight away. Um, so thank you very much for joining today. Um, quick question. Um, have who has completed their strengths profile? Not a problem if not. People have, yes. So, Jackie, good, great. Thank you very much. So, that's really good. Um, if you've got it to hand, that'll be brilliant as we go through this session. So, um, yeah, my name is Dan Collinson from Capfinity, and I'm the Strengths Profile Consultant. Um, uh, Maria, we'll put the link in so that you can um, take your profile uh, at your leisure. Um, but rest sure we'll go through stuff today and it'll just generate some ideas and thoughts for you. Um, so yeah, I'm the Strengths Profile Consultant at Capfinity. Um, and so for the next hour, well, next 55 minutes, um, we're going to talk through uh, strengths. Um, and so let's go through the agenda now. So we're going to cover um, the strengths approach, things like what are strengths and what is Capfinity's approach to strengths use. Um, being your best self with your realised strengths, um, avoiding burnout with learned behaviours and weaknesses. Um, then we'll talk about some of your untapped potential with your realised strengths and then finally embracing strengths. Um, so for you uh, and maybe your colleagues as well. That's what we're going to cover today. Um, so. My background is in the field of positive psychology, um, which you may or may not have heard of, but uh, traditionally psychology looks at illness and deficit uh, and how to solve, uh, fix those things. Um, whereas positive psychology looks at um, how we thrive and flourish and perform our best. And strengths is one of those key components um, of positive psychology. Um, so it's not to replace traditional psychology, it's just an add on, as it were, another uh, area for the field. So thank you very much, Mary, for putting the link in chat. Um, so let's talk about strengths, first of all. Um, so. These are we, what we believe at Capfinity, the five fundamentals to a strengths approach. Um, so focusing on what is right. Quite often, uh, and you may find this as well, um, that around appraisal time or when we have meetings, it's about what's going wrong, how we fix it. Um, but the strengths approach is focusing on what's going well and how can we do more of that? Um, the great thing to know is that every one of us has strengths. Um, for me, that was quite liberating when I first found this out because um, I was very good and very adept at pointing out what my weaknesses are and where I need to improve. Um, but the fact is that we all have strengths, which is great, which is great. Um, we also talk about the smallest things uh, to make the biggest difference. If we focus on our strengths, some of the small things that we do when we're using our strengths can make a huge difference, both personally and professionally as well. Um, our greatest potential is from our strengths. Um, so for an example, um, if I want to become really good at handwriting, I am right handed, so I'd practice with my right hand to become uh, faster and neater. Um, if I practiced with my left hand, you might be able to read my writing and it'd be really slow and clunky doing it. So our greatest potential is from our strengths. And then finally, success in compensating for weaknesses only when using strengths. So we're not saying it's a get out of jail free card that we can just forget about our weaknesses and only focus about our strengths, because there are going to be times when we need to use, uh, th do things and activities that we would admit are our weaknesses, but maybe we, how can we combine our strengths with them in that activity? So that's the five fundamentals of a strengths approach. So I'm not going to talk at you for an hour. Um, you know, use the chat if you want to uh, open the mic and ask a question, please do at any time. Um, very happy with that. Um, and I'm going to get you now to use chat because we're going to get you 
looking at your strength spotting skills. OK. So I am going to be the volunteer in this section. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about something that drains me. Um, and I'm going to talk about it for 30 seconds roughly. And what I would like you to do is to take notes on what you see and hear. OK, so take notes on what you see in here when I talk about something that drains me. Um, and you can put them in chat. That'd be great. And we can go through. We can have a quick discussion afterwards. So something that really, really drains me, OK, is having to do the weekly shop. It really drains me because I have to plan what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to plan what I'm going to eat. And I don't know what I want to eat on Tuesday night. Um, I probably won't know even on Tuesday what I want to eat Tuesday night. So having to plan. Uh, yeah, I just ugh, really irritates me having to plan the whole week. Then I have to go to the shops and because I have a full time job. The times that I go to the shops are when it's peak time. So it's going to be really busy. I'm going to have there's going to be um, lots of people there and I'm still not sure about it in COVID times about being around lots of people. Then there's always going to be a long queue. Of course, there's going to be a long queue because it's peak time. Then I've got to come back and I'm going to unpack the whole shop. Um, so that's really my experience of the weekly shop. OK, so what did you notice there? What notes did you take about what you saw and what you heard? So, Nisit, shows signs of anxiety. Yep, Marion, lots of rolls of eyes. Yes. Uh, Donna, sighing, reasons not to do it. Negative. Yeah, I'd love not to do it. Um, Jackie, ha you sort of have to. Voice tone lowered. Yep, sighed and huffed a little between words. Yes. Focus on the negative activity. Eyes cast downwards. Very good observation. Anna, sighs. Maria, tone of voice, body language and facial expressions. Anna, fed up. Yes. And I'm not even doing my weekly shop yet, but just the thought of it. Uh, Rebecca, there are some things that you don't like, but assumptions, there might not be long queues. Yes, some assumptions in there. Uh, and is it work life balance worries? Yeah, I can only do it um, at a time when um, it's going to be peak time. Great, so well done. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same exercise. And so I'd like you to take notes on what you see in here. But this time I'm going to talk about something that I love to do. OK, so something that I love to do is uh, when people come to me and they have problems that they, they, they might have a real challenge. Uh, and I love that because it means that we can start generating lots of ideas. Um, we could do this and we could do that. And how can we overcome this? Um, and I really love that. So I swear to really come alive and think generating ideas and coming up with solutions. Um, and so for me, that is where I can get really creative. And yeah, for me, that's something I love to do when people come to me and go, I've got this problem. OK, so what did you see and hear there? So Rebecca got your animated. Yep. Maria smiling, eyes wide open, tone of voice was uplifted. Great. Donna, excitement, positive words. Jackie, yeah, different speech, it's sped up, raising intonation, love this. Anna, excitement, energised, that's a key one. Pooja, um, yeah, enthusiasm words, use of hand gestures, very important. Uh, Nisit, like to listen to others, I do. Listener is one of my strengths. Uh, and then Maria, great energy. Wonderful. So what you've demonstrated there is your strength spotting skills. OK, you, so what you've done there is you've been able to distinguish between something that's quite draining for someone and something is actually for something they love to do. And that's a really great skill to, to develop um, if you're starting to take a strengths approach. So well done to all of you there. Great work. So let's look at some of the things we typically see when we're strength spotting. So language. So. We find that people um, are more descriptive um, with their use of language um, when uh, they're talking about something they love to do. Um, there's rich examples. So they might, so someone will come up with really great examples of when they're using that strength. 
Um, people could be more authentic. It's the real you. The real they often say about a strength is something that comes uh, naturally, feels authentic when we do it. Um, energy, as you pointed out there, uh, Maria points out, there's great energy. So people look for signs of energy when uh, a strength might be at play. Um, you've got the next one, so tone and pace. You notice that my tone was slightly slower. Uh, sorry, pace was slower and my tone was quite low when I was talking about something that was draining. Um, and yet it changed completely when I was talking about something I love to do. So it was a, uh, a higher pitched tone and a, a faster pace as well. Um, volunteer. So look for things that people volunteer to do, the tasks they volunteer to do. Because again, this might be a real example of when a strength uh, is a strength of theirs. So if there's if you find yourself as well thinking about activities, either at work or in personal life, that you would volunteer to do quite happily. Um, it could be that a strength uh, is at play here as well. And then finally growth, it's the areas that where we think we would like to uh, expand our, uh, our development on as well. So that's strength spotting um, and well done to all of you for showing, demonstrating your strength spotting skills. Um, and this is something that you may wish to carry forward, um, I say professionally, but also personally as well. Um, this is something, so I've got, my son is 13, and uh, it's something I've been doing for many years, like what, just watching out for those little subtle changes um, to see when uh, a strength might be at play on something he's describing. So good. Um, any questions, just please put in the chat as I go through as well. But what is a strength? So before I go back to that, what, what do you think, what is a strength to you? What would you say a strength is? If you want to put in chat. So T saying something you can do effortlessly. Good. What else do people think? Talent, Sophie, yes. Donna, something you feel confident in. Good. Jackie, characteristic that adds values to others and or situation. Carol, skill that comes across. Uh, so it comes from authentic place, sorry. Miss it, being in control. Anna, something you're good at. Mariam, high preference. Uh, Jackie, something we enjoy and find fulfillment in. Great. Uh, Anisha, strong mind. Maria, having confidence in the action you're taking. Miss it, feeling happy. Great. Excellent definitions there. Quite often what we find at Catfinity when we uh, ask this question, people go, it's the things we're good at. Um, and yes, um, but that's not the whole story. So at Catfinity, we would describe a strength as something that you perform well at when using these, so performance. So these are things that you're good at. However, you could be really good at something and you might find it quite draining and tiring doing it or boring. So this is where we slightly differ between skill and strength. So a skill could be something you're good at, but we'd say that a strength, in addition to being good at it, it's where you feel quite energised and there's enjoyment um, when you're carrying out this activity. So that's where the energy part comes in. And the third element is use. So how often do you get to use these strengths? So this is what the Capfinity Strengths approach is. And what we have, um, so for those of you who have taken your strengths profile, wonderful. Uh, if you haven't, um, Mariam's kindly shared the link um, and you can go and take that at your leisure. It takes about, about 20 minutes to complete, so not too long. Um, and with the strengths profile model, we have the model of development here and we have what we say are four quadrants. So we've got realised strengths, so these are the strengths that tick all the three boxes from the previous slide. So they're things that you perform well at, you feel energised when you use them, and also you get to use them frequently. Um, so these might be some of the strengths that you already know and see in yourself as well. So we say use wisely here. Use them wisely, but still use them, still use them. Um, because when you are using your strengths, um, that is when we perform our best 
um, and it also increases our well-being as well as one of the many impacts benefits of using our strengths. Um, the next quadrant, um, so we go anti-clockwise here when we, we debrief our strengths profile. Um, so the next quadrant is our learned behaviours. So these could be some of the things that you perform well at, but they could be the things that are de-energising for you. OK, so um, for me, an example for me here, uh, in, a, in a many, many moons ago, um, I used to be uh, a project manager and I could get projects delivered uh, to, on time and to budget mostly. Um, but um, so I was good. I was good at what I did. However, I never would spring out of bread on a Monday morning and go, yes, Gantt charts today, lessons learned, documents and meetings. Um, so for me, it was something that um, I, yeah, I was good at, but it was quite de-energising for me. Um, so Rebecca's put writing reports for you. OK, is that a learned behaviour or a realised strength, Rebecca? Be interesting to know. Um, and so learned behaviours, so it's learned, OK, good. Um, Learn behaviours could be one of two things, really. So it could be what was it used to be a realised strength that maybe you've overplayed and so it's not as energising. So if you'd asked me to take the strengths profile 20 years ago, um, I would I know for certain that competitiveness would be my realised strengths because I was doing a lot of team sports at the time. Um, and by the end of my career, I, I was fed up with competition. So now competitiveness is a learned behaviour of mine because I'd overplayed that strength. So it's something to be mindful of as well. Um, additionally, a learned behaviour could be because something where we've worked, you've been in the same role for a long time. So you've built up lots of skills um, as a result. Or alternatively, it could be a weakness that you've learned to get to a competent level of ability from. So those are our learned behaviours, and these can quite often be the light bulb moments for people. Um, Recognising the things that they are good at, but may not be as energising for them. Then we've got our next, moving along the quadrants, we have our weaknesses. Um, so it's no get out of jail free card, we don't forget about our weaknesses. Um, but we try and find out whether they are career critical or they're critical for our goals. Um, and we'll discuss about that uh, as I get to that slide further on. Um, but these are the things that we sort of poor, perform poorly um, and also are, are very de-energising for us. And then our final quadrant the, in the top right is our unrealised strengths. So these again are the things that you perform well at. Um, you get a lot of energy and enjoyment out of using them, but we might not have the opportunity to use them as frequently. And what we talk about here is with our unrealized strengths, these are our greatest area of opportunity for personal growth and development. So really exciting quadrant to look at and explore. So hopefully that makes sense about the four quadrants in our model of development. Any thoughts or questions so far? No problem if not. And one of my previous roles was uh, a university lecturer. And so if I I've always used to say to students, if there's silence, I see that's a sign to move on. Um, so I will move on. This, oh, sorry. So just a question from Jackie. Uh, so concerned that your strength of humour is holding you back. I am now director and while people sometimes appreciate my in the mood, it does sometimes make me look superficial and substantial. Uh, you try to suppress my humour, it makes me sad and it's not authentic. So this is a really, uh, thank you very much for sharing that Jackie. Um, and humour is a one because it always comes up in my top real life strengths. So I'm with you here. Um, but it's also one of the ones that we have to be most careful uh, with our use. So just as people don't understand what their strengths are and so don't use them enough, sometimes we can overplay our strengths. So it's looking at how we can use the strength in the right amount 
and at the right time. So in the right context and in the right measure. Um, so um, maybe not suppressing Jackie, but looking at when are the when would be the best opportunities to use that strength. Um, so something maybe to reflect on um, as we go through the session and afterwards. OK, um, but yeah, lightening the mood can be something that's really impactful and can take the sting out of a situation. So it, again, it's having that strength spotting awareness and self-awareness, Jackie, about when you feel the right time to use that strength of humour would be. But great question, thank you. Um, so that's Jackie Goss. Jackie Mann, would you agree that weakness strike challenges also opportunities to grow? Um, yes, they are an opportunity to grow. Um, it might be that you only get to competency by looking, developing your weaknesses. Um, whereas we would suggest that looking at our strengths is a uh, best opportunity to, to grow further. Um, and so, yeah, you might be able to move a weakness into a learned behaviour. Um, but from our experience, we find it's very rare that it would move into something that becomes energising for us as well. Not to say it doesn't, um, but um, yeah, we, it's uh, the exception to the rule. There's the phrase going for. Great. So thank you very much, both Jackies, for your comments there. That was really helpful, really good. Good questions. So these are some of the organisations that we uh, work with uh, in Strengths. It's becoming um, really popular within, within organisations now because they're starting to real, realise the benefits um, that a strengths approach can bring. Um, so again, it's becoming more commonplace now that organisations are taking a strengths based approach. Let's look at the benefits of strengths for yourself. Um, so this is born out from our own experiences and also from research in the field as well. So when we uh, understand our strengths and use them effectively or successfully, um, people are happier and more confident. There's high energy and increased productivity. Um, and so just going back to that previous one, um, thinking about it, if it's something you enjoy doing uh, and you're good at doing it, then go hand in hand that there'll be higher energy and uh, increased productivity as well. Now this next one I really like. Um, so um, part of my PhD is uh, exploring strengths based leadership in the NHS um, to improve not just only performance, but also well-being as well. Um, and so research points that to um, when a strengths approach is used, it reduces stress and increases resilience. So again, thinking around how this can benefit you and your colleagues as well by reducing stress and thinking about if you're doing things that you enjoy uh, and uh, you're good at, it you know it goes to say that it would be less stressful than if it was something that you really didn't enjoy doing uh, and you weren't so great at. Um, you're more likely to achieve your goals with a strengths approach develop faster in areas of strength as opposed to developing weaknesses. Thinking about my example about practicing writing my right and left hand. Um, more confidence in career decisions when you understand what your strengths are and um, which roles would allow you to play to your strengths more frequently. OK, so that was about for yourself and now thinking about being self uh, aware of your strengths uh, and how that can help you in day-to-day -day life. Um, so just a question come in or something in chat from Rebecca. Uh, you use these profiles as part of your leadership program at Nottingham University Hospitals. You can see the impact it had on colleagues focusing on strengths. That's wonderful Rebecca um, and hopefully it was a positive impact it had on your colleagues. Um, and again it's really energising for people to talk about what they're good at and what they enjoy doing. Um, and having that focus on it as well. Brilliant. Um, so I won't go through this slice, slide in its entirety, um, but just looking at some of the key things f that I think um, stand out. Um, so being so emotional intelligence. So we did that strength spotting exercise at the beginning. And again, that ties in with uh, emotional intelligence. Um, 
being being self-aware of our, our limitations. Um, what's great about the form the, the model of development is it confesses, you know, we do have weaknesses. It's okay, and you know that's okay. We are, not everyone is good at everything. I think that's what I like about the strengths approach is its acceptance about that. Um, quite often in the past, sort of the old style you know, of, of working, so everyone has to be good uh, at every sing, every single thing, um, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, people will excel at different things. So, teachers put something in chat. Uh, you do the strengths profile and have self awareness as your strength. Will it make it better for the self aware application, or is it an additional skill required? Uh, no, no, no. So I, I think having that self awareness of yourself and when to use your strengths and when not to use your strengths um, will really help you in that situation. Well, great question. Um, and also motivation. So being self-aware and regulating your, and you know, being self-aware of your strengths can really help uh, motivate you towards your goals. Great. So let's move on to our next slide. So this again is some some of the research about the benefits um, of a strengths approach. So in teams, um, productivity. Um, this I like this stat here. So. Um, when teams took a strengths approach, um, productivity rose by 12.5%. Okay, so if you could raise your own and your team's uh, productivity by 12.5%, what would be the impact for you? Have a thought about that. Um, again, it, delegation. If you're aware of your strengths and the strengths of your colleagues, or they're aware of their strengths, when it comes to task um, assignment, Thinking about, well, who can we delegate a task to which will allow them to use their strengths? So again, really great thing when we're project planning or task planning as well. Um, it also increases trust and creativity within the teams. If we're thinking organisations as a whole now, um, uh, customer satisfaction increased 44% with a strengths approach. Um, employee retention was up 50%. And I think this is a key one, um, especially when there is high turnover or large numbers of staff leaving. There are two costs in, involved in um, when staff leave. You've got the cost, the financial cost of replacing them. So going through the recruitment process, paying for the recruitment fees, uh, getting people up to speed. And you've also got the, the knowledge cost as well and experience so if someone leaves who's very experienced you know you, the team the organization lose that knowledge as well so if we're able to keep people because uh keep people longer then also benefits the organization um also highlighting their uh, employee engagement uh, increases by six times when um organizations take a strength-based approach so employee engagement is quite a big sort of buzz, buzzword at the moment in the industry. Um, and so if we can increase our engagement, then again, that's uh, an additional benefit. And the final section here is about careers. And so we're talking about students here, or we've got young people starting out in their careers, but they're 30% more excited about their future uh, and work readiness. And again, this doesn't have to be about students. It can be talk at appraisal time as well. Um, I know when I, I was uh, in way back in the past when I would have my appraisal, it would be, well, you've done this well, but you need to work on this, this and this. And quite often the this, this and this were my weaknesses. But if we take a strengths focused approach, again, that can have a really great impact. Good. So now, not I appreciate not everyone has taken their strengths profile, but for those of you who have, um, if you've got that to hand, that would be wonderful. Um, if not, maybe just think about some of your strengths as we go through these next sections. So coming back to the realised strengths again. So these are the strengths where we perform really well, we find them energising and we get a, um, frequent opportunities to use them. Um, 
so what we would suggest is so understand your strengths um think about the success to date you've had with them, using these strengths uh, and some of the stories that are behind them because that can be um really good reminder for you about uh, and give you the evidence that uh this strength has had a, a positive impact uh for you um, so start making a plan. Think about how you can align your strengths to your career and to your life goals as well. And then finally, don't overplay them. Remember we were talking about before, if we can't, we do overplay them. So it's using them maybe too frequently or in inappropriate uh, settings. Um, we can find that they become uh, the energy, energy goes from them. So now what I'm going to do is uh, ask you two questions. The first question is, um, which of your strengths, your real life strengths, would you, are you, are you most known for? Which of your strengths are you most known for? So, for, so if you want to put that in chat, that'd be great. And if you've not done the um, strengths profile yet, just to think about some of the things that you're, the strengths you're known for. So Jackie, humour, brilliant. Um, so for me, um, optimism is one of the ones that I'm known for. My friends will certainly come to me when they have problems because uh, they know that I'll be optimistic about solving the problems or working with them on it. Uh, Anna, empathetic, lovely. Maria, resilience. Nisit, team player. Donna, organised. Carol, communication skills, wonderful. Marion, personalisation, very good, love that. Pooja, punctuality. Joe organised as well. Sophie writing. Joe got com specialist, and then Jackie Mann coaching staff. Uh, Emma's come through with empathetic and esteem builder. Fantastic. So and Rebecca's optimistic as well. Great. Um, so really fantastic strengths which you're known for. Um, so my next question to you is, which do you want to be known for? So which ones would you like to be known for? So tap famous put empathetic. So thinking about your strengths, which do you want to be known for? Maria, kindness, lovely. And got thumbs up there as well. What other strengths would people want to be known for? So Nissit as well, kindness. Yeah, kindness and compassion comes quite comes quite frequently and do this. So Carol saying no, that so your US means more. Yeah, so it, it's having it's having that self-awareness yourself about what to say yes to and what to say no to, and having the courage as well to say it. Uh, Sophie, leadership and expertise. Jackie Mann, empowering others. Great, so a steam builder might be in there as well, or catalyst. Uh, Rebecca, um, saying about Maria, she's all really kind. There we go. Thank you for that lovely strength spotting feedback, Rebecca. Emma, authenticity. Um, Anisha, um, what did Anisha put? Uh, positive. OK. And we've got some more coming through as well. So Mariam's got, uh, sorry, Joe's got being kind. Um, Tapfoon's kindness. Mariam, optimistic. Jackie Goss, emotional awareness. And then Pooja, positivity. OK, so question then for you and don't have to put this in chat, but how do you think what ways could you? Um, improve or sorry, in what ways could you demonstrate or make sure that you are known for those strengths that you'd like to be known for? So again, nothing, don't need to put that in the chat, just some food for thought for you is about how could you go about um, making sure that you're known for the strength you would like to be known for. Great, so well done there. And the next slide, so we'll talk about learned behaviours now. So these again, the things that we find energising to do, um, and sorry, things we don't find energising to do, um, but we perform well at. So, um, so think about things like how much are you doing it? and how much does it drain you as well 
Um, we talk about doing a le learned behavior sandwich. So if you know you've got to do a task that is a learned behavior, look for um, strengths that you could use before and after the learned behavior. So it's like goes in the middle of the two. Uh, and then also, is it career critical or goal critical? Um, if it is, maybe find someone who has a strength of your learned behavior or maybe use one of your realized or unrealized strengths when combine those with that task of learned behavior. Um, so an example for me there is a friend of mine um, is a school teacher. Um, he hates marking, um, which I think is probably quite a common thing. Um, and he was uh, bemoaning having to do his marking one day to me. And I know that he has the strength of competitiveness. So I said to him, Right, you've got one hour to mark as many papers as you can. Every subsequent hour, you have to beat the previous hours. So he doesn't necessarily enjoy the task of marking, but it's not so um, challenging for him now because he's combining his learned behaviour with the strength. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, yeah, it's very cunning. Yes, yes, it is, Sophie. But it's when we come creative and think about those different ways of using our strengths to, to work with our learned behaviours and weaknesses. So my question is, what learned behaviour is the most draining for you? What learned behaviour is the most draining for you? And don't be surprised if work ethic or time optimizer is comes up in your learned behaviours. That's quite common for people. Um, so T's got, uh, so we've got uh, attention to details. Yeah, Marion, resilience. Jackie, Goss, connector. Anna, work ethic. Yeah, you're not alone. You're not alone. Uh, Rebecca, writer. Report writing, Jackie Mann. Yeah. Sophie, Excel spreadsheets. Yeah, Pooja, persuasion. OK, what else is coming through? Emma having to encourage others to follow work rules and ethics. Yeah, adherence is one of my top real life strengths, Emma. Uh, Maria, terminology. Great. So my next question to you then is, how will you manage this now? So thinking about the example I get, gave of my school teacher friend, or could you combine, could you work in conjunction with another person who has this learned behavior, has your learned behavior as a strength? So Carol, supporting your colleagues who make everything hard. Yeah. Is that the learned behavior or is that how you will uh, manage this now? So for, yeah, for my friend, it was about they were going to combine it with a different strength. So is there a different one of your real life strengths that may be able to do it? So Rebecca says use Rapport Builder to seek out others to help. Wonderful. OK, uh, be aware of my drain state and handle the task appropriately. Yeah. Maybe notice when our NG levels are flagging and maybe when our NG levels are a bit higher than doing the task. Because quite often we find that when people are doing lots of learned behaviours, that that's when burnout can appear. Because the energy levels are, are lower. Maria, you've downloaded an app with NHS terminology. Good, well done for you. So what would that be? That would be growth, I think. The strength of growth there. Yeah, to learn and uh, understand the new terminology. OK. Uh, what else have we got just coming through? So, Carol, you've commenced working from home uh, to re-energise. Good, yeah. So find those uh, spaces that uh, allow us to um, regain some of our energy. So let's now look at our weaknesses quadrant. Um, so again, looking at is it career or goal critical? Um, if it's not, we can just move on from it. Um, but if it is, then again, look about ways we could use our strengths to complement or someone else's strengths to complement using having to use this weakness. Um, so focus on the result you want, then use strengths to compensate. And coming back to our limitations, being self aware of our limitations, it's OK to ask for help. Um, not everyone is going to be 
brilliant at everything. OK, so my question for you now is which strengths could compensate for a career critical weakness for you? Which strength could compensate for a career career critical weakness? Um, so I say in the past for me, um, planner would have been a challenge for me, but, but project management, you need to do a lot of planning. Um, so for me, um, it was about being, it was using the strengths of order and being more structured. Um, so Sophie, so a career critical strength, yeah. So, so which critical weakness could you use your uh, strength with? Maria, being willing to learn and try new things. Excellent, so maybe a bit of curiosity there and growth, the strength of growth, willing to learn and try new things, curiosity, wonderful. Rebecca, humour is a weakness, but rapport builder helps with relationships with people. Great, great stuff. So you're already combining the strengths with the weakness. Love it. Jackie Mann around report writing, structured data analysis, writing. OK, yeah, good. Mariam, adventure is your weakness. So optimism and self-belief would be great. Yeah. Um, wonderful. So coming up already with some great partnering strengths for weaknesses here. Um, and it may never be that you are energised by the weakness, but combining with the strength can sort of make, you know, make it more manageable um, and more en yeah, enjoyable, as it were. Jackie Goss, you can try and use your strength uh, of service to overcome your weakness of giving feedback, um, to view differently activity of giving feedback. Yeah, you're, you're helping another person. Yeah, you're, you're being giving service about how another person can develop and, and improve. So wonderful, that's a really good example. Um, and if I, a friend of mine, he really loves Star Wars, and so yeah, he would pick up on the try. There is no try, it's only do, as Yoda said. Um, wonderful. Um, so let's move on to our unrealized strengths. So these are things that we perform well at, we enjoy doing, but we might not get the opportunity to use them as often. Um, so focus on the love to's and not should do's. Um, OK, thanks very much, Joe. Uh, thanks very much. And we're recording this so you'll get the last 15 minutes as well. Um, so set your self-development goals that energise you. OK, so thinking about those things you perform well and are energising, but you don't use as frequently. My first question to you is. Which are you most excited about using in your career further? So for me, one of my strengths, uh, unrealized strengths is legacy. And part of Capfinity's goals is uh, for strengthening the world. And I am really excited about leaving that legacy behind, being part of that legacy of uh, my legacy of, of achieving strengthening the world. So that's something that's really exciting me uh, at the moment. So what are some of the things that you don't get to do as frequently, you know, the things that you'd love to do um, that you're excited about using? Marion, rapport builder as you move into a new role. Excellent. So there will be a chance to use it more frequently, hopefully, in that new role. Uh, Jackie, sketch noting. I'm not sure what that is. Um, Carol, training staff. Yeah, so maybe an, strength, an unrealized strength might be explainer um, or a steam builder as you help other people to learn new skills. Excellent. What else are other, what other things are people excited about? And again, this, this quadrant can be a real uh, light bulb moment for people. Um, and can people can get uh, really, really excited about this because there's opportunities to do th finding ways of think to do things that they may not have done before or as much as they'd want. So my second question to you then is. Um, what will you do? So thinking about that strength you're excited about, what will you do so that you can use it more frequently or in what ways will you use it? 
So Marion, Jackie and Carol, how will you how will you go about using that strength? How will you ensure you get the opportunity to use it more? <clears throat> so for me, with legacy and strengthening the world, it's doing sessions like this, which I absolutely love and I get lots of energy from. Um, and it's great when people uh, really are engaged in the topic. So Carol, you've booked yourself on a yourself on a train the trainer course as you last worked in the union 20 years ago. OK, yeah, so great. So train the trainer course would be really useful for you. What else are people thinking? OK, we are getting near to the end of the session, so yeah, maybe energy is flagging, but uh, so we'll move on now. Um, so, Mariam, just before we do, uh, start conversation with new colleagues to find out more about them. Then to the personalization too. Wonderful, great. Jackie Man, using learning sessions like this to sketch notes rather than write them. Oh, I see what you mean now. OK, yeah, that's great. Jackie Goss, uh, creativity, you will. Ah, lovely change in language there. <laughs> Schedule some blue sky sessions for problem solving at work. Great. Rebecca, look for opportunities to build on strength. Yeah, and again, having that strength, self-awareness and also strength spotting for those opportunities. Great. Um, we group uh, the strengths into five families. Um, and so for each of the families, these are some of the most common and least common strengths. Um, so in the being family, humility um, is one of the most common, is the most common. And then courage is the least common. In communicating, so explainer is the most common, um, but one of the least common is narrator. So um, yeah, some of the differences there. In the motivating family, improver is the most common strength, and then work ethic is the least common. And I don't think it's a bad thing, uh, work ethic here, because that sort of points towards people who are starting to get a better work-life balance. OK, so it doesn't mean that they're lazy by work, by work ethic being one of the lower ones. It means people are starting to navigate to migrate to a more better work life balance. Um, so um, worthwhile explaining that point there uh, in the relating family relationship deepener is the most common and enabler the least. And then finally, in the thinking family resolver is most common and time optimizer the least common. We find that quite often. Good. Final section now, final straight. So embracing your um, your strengths. So you quite often, lots of people have taken the um, the free starter profile. You can upgrade to an introductory profile or an expert profile, which gives you more information about each of your strengths and it gives you details more strengths in each of the quadrants than the free starter. Um, there's also an, a career section there as well uh, to look at if you so desire uh, and have conversations with uh, colleagues as well. Also, um, you have a uh, your potential in these profiles, you have a your potential um, section, which is really great because it focuses on, on your unrealized strengths uh, and gives you tips and guidance about how you might be able to use them more frequently. Um, and again, this can be a really great opportunity for yourself, for your personal and professional development, but also when working with colleagues as well. And if you are in a in a leadership position, um, the the your potential um, and unrealized strengths can be a really great uh, way of having those one to one or annual appraisal conversations with your team members. Um, so yeah, they're in the introductory and uh, expert profiles. And then moving on to now, so how you can apply your strengths every day. So for yourself, you can share your profile with people so that they can understand what your strengths are, what your le learned behaviours are and what your weaknesses are. Um, use the language of strengths. So quite often, if we don't have a language of something, we don't see it. Um, and we, it's common for people to be able to 
have a language of weaknesses, but by introducing a language of strengths, we start to see it more frequently. Um, you might, might have heard you know, people say, um, if you're thinking about buying a yellow car, you suddenly start noticing more yellow cars out on the road. Um, so again, when we have a language of things, we start seeing them more frequently. Rebecca saying, in your previous team, we all did it and had a session showing our profiles. It's really powerful. Wonderful. That's a great example, Rebecca. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and it can be really powerful. It really is. Um, review the tips in your profile and then set energizing goals and objectives for yourself or you know, if you're in a leadership position for your colleagues as well. So that's um, for yourself. As a team member, so you now have got those skills, you started developing those skills of strength spotting. So you keep building on those um, and encourage your, your colleagues to strength spot as well. Um, thinking about uh, complementary partnering on tasks. So who has a strength that may compensate for my learned behavioural weaknesses and can we work together? Um, appreciation of team diversity. Um, you will all have different strengths, weaknesses, learned behaviours, unrealised strengths, realised strengths. Um, and even if you have some the same, you use them in different ways. So having that appreciation, and as Marion will probably already uh, have this with the, her strength of personalisation, will we'll, you know, we'll understand that and appreciation the team diversity. And again, it can improve communication when we're, talk, we're coming from a place of strengths. For a manager or a team leader, um, you can understand the collective team strengths, which is really useful. Um, look at the profiles, set developmental goals on strengths. Um, as I talked before about delegating and assigning tasks based on people who would have those strengths and be able to use them successfully. Um, and also it, the performance reviews. Um, we find that people have uh, a lot more motivating, engaging and um, positive performance reviews when it's uh, taking a predominantly strengths approach. Great, nearly there, nearly there. Um, so some more um, um, resources for you. So on our website at strengthsprofile.com forward slash self, um, there's some resources there for thinking around how you may want to um, uh, use your strengths more effectively and just some ideas there. So that's a really good resource. Or if you want to read more into strengths, we've got our uh, strengths profile book which is strengthsprofile.com forward slash products forward slash books so adherence is one of the top, my top strengths so keeping to time is something i'm very keen on um so that's it from me um are there any questions at all um if you want to put those in chat or put open your mic um what i would like to say is thank you very much for being so engaged in the session uh, and sharing in chat so that was wonderful you're very welcome carol glad you enjoyed it and thank you for your contributions uh, ah some nice links been put in there by marion thank you you're very welcome donna glad you enjoyed the session you're very welcome anna and jackie as well jackie goss uh, great Glad there's lots of things for thought and um, if you want to get in touch with me, um, I'll put my email address in chat now. So you can, or you can contact Mariam. I'm happy for her to pass on my contact details. Um, so yeah, please get in touch with me if you have any questions. I'm very happy to answer them um, and just say, yeah, thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of the sessions and your evening.